Welcome to the madhouse. <laughs> What is up, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back to the Mile Sport Podcast, episode 81. Oh, hey there, old sport. Old sport. <laughs> old sport. Today on the podcast, we're going to be talking about some Chucky, we're going to be talking about some Trick or Treat Studios, some American Horror Story, and much, much more. Much, much more. So let's jump right into it with yeah. the first bit of news. Sci-Fi orders a 10-episode uh, series for Child's Play. Yes, it's going to be 10 episodes. Um... If you, uh, I think we did, we did a review of... I don't think we did. We did do a review of the one that came out last Child, year. Child's Play uh, reboot. Yeah, with Mark Hamill. Mark Hamill. The Saving Grace. Oh, God. Yeah, it was... Although, a, we, as much as we love Aubrey Plaza, mm, not our best work. Not our best work, but I am curious to see if, uh... What's the guy, who, I think his name is Don something, Mancini or something? Oh, the, the creator? No, the guy who plays Chucky. The guy who voices Chucky. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. See if he comes back to voice Chucky. And if it's going to take place in that universe. Yeah, uh, we'll see. I know that... Uh, let's see. Tom Holland. Name. Oh, wait, we're going to see about Tom Holland. No, that's the director, I think. The creator. Oh, Don, Don Mancini was uh, the franchise creator. Oh, okay. He's going to direct the first episode. Okay. Yeah, that's what I thought. I was like, I think yeah. that's who no, I wrote Tom Holland was. did uh, Fright Night. Oh, did he? Yeah. Not the kid. There's a guy named Tom Holland. There's another Tom Holland. I was like... He wasn't even alive when Fright Night came out, probably. Oh, Fright Night. In the 80s. Oh. Yeah. Um, but yeah, Don Mancini, he's coming back to do it. Uh-huh. Yeah, he'll be directing the first episode. That'd be cool. Yeah. I wonder if he's going to be in a producer on it or if he's going to write it. Oh, uh, we'll see. I mean, I'm probably, he's probably an executive producer. Um, we shall see. Let's see. Uh, it's gonna be produced by Universal Content Productions. Okay. Oh well, yeah, Universal owns Sci-Fi. Um, this is the same company, yeah. Sci-Fi, who brought you the reimagining or should you say next installment of uh, Leprechaun too. They they brought back Leprechaun. Yeah, Mancini um, will write the this new version and uh, serve as a show. Uh, showrunner. That's cool then. Uh, and Nick and Tosca, I think that's how you pronounce his name. He's a t- he's a well-known TV uh, writer producer. He's also helping out on it. Nice. Yeah. So should be pretty good. We'll see. I'll check it out. Give it a watch. It's Chucky. I I, I I'm curious to see how they're gonna make the doll this time around. Yeah. If they're gonna continue off the lore and story of the. Uh, the, Cur- the curse and um, I think it's gonna be its own thing of Chucky, or if it's gonna be taking place after one. I don't know how they're gonna. I think it's gonna it. be its completely own thing. Hopefully. Okay. So I don't know. We'll see. Where, when we get more info about it, we'll let you guys know. Yeah. What you got for us, Sam? Uh, next up, I I know you said you didn't want to talk about this, but I do. Uh, talking about The Exorcist. Um, how this new article is coming back to light from 1974 and its initial release. Uh, talking about like how the movie culture was for that movie. Obviously, we know that that movie changed cinema forever. It, not only cinema, but it changed horror, too. It changed horror forever. Yeah. Um, but, like, it was really just talking about how the audience really was receptive to it. Obviously, you know, you hear tons of stories, people walking out of the movie because it was frightening. People still don't watch the movie because it's terrifying. Yeah, to this People day. vomiting. Um, I didn't realize that it was such, that it had such a big following on its release. When I was reading this article, it was saying that People were waiting up to four hours in the because yeah. it came out around Christmas time. Yeah. So you know, in the snow, waiting four hours, people fist fights, people trying to bribe people to cut in line. Yeah. Um, there was a it was a pretty crazy like. That's how the movies. Thing. That's but that's how the movies used to be up to the day till the internet came around. And then, yeah. You know, online ticketing came around. Like 
you know, 2007, <laughs> eight, it really started coming around. And, yeah, and so, now it just runs it. I mean, you rarely see a line at the box office. Yeah, no, yeah, you don't see. Everybody buys their tickets online now. And, no, yeah, I can see that. I mean, this movie really changed. I, I remember talking to one of my uncles, and he said, like, after the movie, like there was a like, like the the theater they went to, there was like an apartment that like reminiscent to The Exorcist, and they were just scared to look up at it and stuff. Oh wow! And, yeah, it was. Yeah, it was, it's a, it's a terrifying movie, and to this day, it still has an impact on the horror community. It's one of the, probably the greatest horror movies ever made. To this, yeah, day I would probably yeah, I would, I'd definitely top five. Yeah, definitely, because I mean that really changed the way we looked at cinema. On top of that, it changed the <coughs> world of, of how effects were done in movies too. You know? Oh yeah, completely. Um, because. And you know you see, of course, her iconic head twist. Yeah. That probably has was never been done on the on film before. Yeah, definitely. And that really changed the way you look at like movies. Like a lot of you can tell a lot of inspiration came from that, like the Insidious franchise, Conjuring, and stuff. Of like course. even though it was all based on true stories, I mean, you can tell a lot of the the horror aspects of those movies. They got probably a ton of inspiration from The Exorcist. Oh yeah, I mean, I feel like every filmmaker in horror, especially in that genre of like possession horror. Has to watch The Exorcist. Definitely. Uh, and probably when they're writing it, when they're filming it, somewhere along the line they're rewatching that movie to say, okay, this is what they did, and this is what worked well. Yeah. Because people, um, you know, it's a good piece of cinema. Definitely. I agree. No, it's it's such a good movie, and I remember rewatching it for uh, Halloween Horror Nights in 2016. Yeah. I had not wanted to watch it prior to that, and after watching it, I realized how good of a horror movie it was. Yeah. And ultimately, it, it's a battle of it's a, it's good versus evil, so. <laughs> Definitely. It's a good movie. What do you um, got? Trick or Treat Studios are uh, going to be doing a new Universal Monsters mask line collection, which I'm definitely going to want to try to start collecting. And the first one that they're coming out with is the monster from Frankenstein. Definitely. Uh, I saw the concept art. Oh, i got to check that out. Yeah, if you look at if you look on the article that from, most of, as you guys probably know already. Well, this is it, right? Yeah. It's okay. pretty sick, the monster. Yeah, it's uh, it's pretty reminiscent to the original film. Yeah, it's, it's really based cool. upon, what, what's the guy's name? The actor? Oh, uh, <laughs> uh, shit. I know his name on the top of my head. Yeah, it's guy. reminiscent off of him, though. Yeah. Uh, Boris Karloff. Bo yeah, Boris, yeah. yeah. So it's based upon his monster, the original Frankenstein's monster. Definitely, yeah. And I, it looks sick. I'm excited sick. to see what other things are going to do. Yeah, they can easily, they can do a mummy one. Uh, a cool Invisible Man one would be cool if they yeah. pulled off. I wonder if they're going to be at Midsummer selling them. Yeah, I because they had a booth at Midsummer, and that's where I bought the Killer Clowns. Oh, yeah, that's where I bought Fatso, yeah. So I, I, I really like their products. I want to get a Michael Myers mask from them. I yeah. want to start collecting masks a little and, bit. And, you know, it's, it, they're super good quality, and, and they, I mean, they reasonably are... Reasonably priced. Though. But they're reasonably priced. They're a little expensive, but, yeah. like, for a good reason, because they do a good product. Yeah. Um, it's but just, speaking of that, speaking of Universal Monsters, something else I wanted to bring up. What is it? Invisible Man. Invisible Man. Yeah, Blumhouse is relaunching the Invisible Man. Yeah, we've, been, we've talked about that a little bit. They are doing it their own way. Yeah. But it's, you know, reminiscent to, uh, almost reminiscent to the original, uh, I, don't, I don't know if you saw it, uh, Hollow Man? No. It, it was uh, it was kind of like an Invisible Man take, but it was pretty cool, but <laughs> what you got on Invisible Man? Yeah, so it's, um, if you guys remember, obviously, the Dark Universe, when Universal was trying to do it, Yeah. they were trying to make most of those movies PG-13. Was oh, that what their goal was? Their goal was to make a PG-13 so that they had a wider audience to okay. to reach out to. Uh, so obviously the Mummy when it came out, the Tom Cruise one, Which that was PG-13. A lot of people didn't like. Yeah. I actually, I actually enjoyed it. I haven't seen it, so I, I can't speak on yeah. whether or not it's good or bad. Um, but this one is going to be rated R because it's going to be its own standalone now. Mm -hmm. um, so they're going to be doing it as rated R, which is probably going to make it. It can either go one of two ways. They're going to rely heavily on, like, gore and graphicness. Yeah. Or because they wanted to take it to a more sinister place, mm -hmm. that's that's the result of it. And I'm kind of hoping it's because it's taken it to a more sinister place. Yeah. Um, Blumhouse released the trailer, I think, in November of last year, and it looks really good. Um, if you guys don't know the girl, one of the girls from Us... The uh, the one of the friends, the you know the the girl that played the friend. Yeah. I I forget her name, but she's gonna be starring in it. Um, and she looks pretty. She looks pretty good in that movie. She looks like, uh, she's she's gonna play a good character in that movie. Where yeah. Um, it's I think her husband or something, and he's trying to come back to kill her, and he's been working on this technology to make it invisible, and um, after he like dies, which we don't know if he's actually dead or if he's just invisible. You know, he faked his death or everything. Yeah. Um. 
I think they may have said he died, or he just faked his death, you know, they kind of explained that, but anyway, he comes back to try to kill her, and um, she, people think she's going crazy, but, you know, she's trying to prove people wrong, yeah. so, that, it looks, it looks pretty good, though, I can't wait to see it, and I'm excited for this movie, I think it's going to be pretty good. Yeah, I definitely, I'm excited to see it, and see what they do, hopefully. Then again, Blumhouse is hit or miss. Yeah, it's either they're going to make something fantastic or it's the truth, truth or dare, truth or dare. <laughs> and that's, that's how you know scale. that's like that's like the scale it's either truth or dare or like halloween you yeah, know what i mean so there's like, no really in between yeah there's no in between yeah um so yeah i'm looking forward to that what you got next uh sarah polson coming back and she's gonna be a central character for american horror story season 10 yeah um on top of that they just renewed uh, american horror story up to 13 seasons now. yeah so, so season nine obviously 1984 1984 which yeah. i have not finished yet i, I haven't watched I, I haven't watched any of it i think i watched the first i haven't all recorded I, I watched the first episode which was pretty interesting um and i heard the season was not too bad so i gotta go back and watch it yeah um i still think hands down my my favorite season was probably hotel Wow, um, really? Yeah, I really liked Hotel. I, most people say it's uh, Murder House. Murder House is no Murder House was really good too. Yeah, my favorite is Asylum. I did like Apocalypse though. Apocalypse was good. See, I've only watched Asylum and Coven. I did. I watched a few episodes of Murder House, but I didn't finish Murder House. Yeah, um, and then Free I, Show wasn't too bad. Um, let's see, Hotel was good. Yeah. Roanoke Nightmare was just it wasn't good. Uh, what was season seven? Oh, season seven was Colt. I liked Colt. Colt was good. Yeah. Um, and Apocalypse was. I okay. liked Apocalypse. So I don't know. There's no no word of what the demon is for season ten. Ten. Because they are very secretive up until like the like last, last month. Second. Yeah. Yeah, and then they'll reveal it. But they'll give you. So they'll give you a title of what the what it's gonna be. Yeah. And then they'll they'll put up those like little weird teaser trailers they always do. Yeah. And then like before the show airs, like a couple weeks before, they'll put out an actual trailer to give you a little insight of what yeah. it's gonna be. So. Yeah, and um, Sarah Paulson for the first time in a long time, wasn't in season nine. Yeah, she wasn't in, in 1984. She was in Apocalypse. Yeah. And she played, she re reprised her role from Coven. Yeah. As uh, one of the leaders. Well, like one, one of the leaders. witches. Yeah, for the witches, which was another good season. Yeah. Um, and Sarah Paulson took a break off, as well as Evan Peters took a break off for 1984. Yeah. I don't know if Evan Peters will be returning to season ten. Hopefully, but uh, I think he's he's a he's a good actor. Too. He's definitely a great actor. He, uh, what he did, I don't know if you watched, you didn't watch Cult. No. But in Cult, he the, he uh, there was like a couple. Of, I think there was an episode where he played a bunch of famous famous cult leaders. Oh really? Like so, he went back and played Manson. He played like a bunch of different famous cult leaders because they were telling stories of all these cults and stuff. And he did a freaking phenomenal job. That's crazy. So, yeah. but I, I'm cr it's crazy to think that that show. Is going to end up getting at least thirteen seasons. I know. I mean, it's it's a big famous show too. I mean, a lot of people love it, and it's got it's such got a, a big cult fan. following. It's got a cult following. There you go. Yeah. Um, but I, I'm really excited to see what season ten is going to be about. What's to come in the next uh, three seasons after that too? Yeah, definitely. I'm really excited to see what they'll do. All right, what you got for us next? Uh, and a little bit of sad news here for the channel. What? Scott Dickerson is uh, no longer on. Doctor Strange Multiverse of... What is it called? Multiverse of... Multiverse of Madness. Multiverse of Madness, um, yeah. I don't really know too much about that director. Yeah. Um, from what, I, from what I've from what i read, it's, it was due to creative differences. Um, but he... So he's a director of Emily Rose. That's just Emily Rose. Yeah, it was... Sinister and Doctor, uh, Doctor Strange. The original. So he did the first Doctor Strange. Yeah. Oh, wow. That sucks. Uh, it was because of creative differences. Yeah. Marvel wanted him to go one way, and he had another plan I think, he wanted to go. I think what I was reading, too, was m he wanted to go an R rating. Yeah. Marvel wanted to keep it PG-13, though. Yeah. But they, Kevin Feige said, you're still going to love it, even though it's PG-13. Yeah. Uh, we'll see. I was excited to see what horror he was going to bring to the table with this next installment, and if they were going to make this kind of like the first rated R horror Marvel movie, that would have been insanely awesome. Um, but I'm still glad it's still going to be a, the first ever ra or the first ever horror Marvel movie, Marvel movie, um, and it's supposed to tie into uh, well, WandaVision too. Yeah, so, so that'll be interesting. We'll see how that because Elizabeth Olsen will be in it. Yeah, so they, so WandaVision is going to come out later on this, this year. year. Yeah. yeah, so um, 
that's supposed to directly tie into Doctor Strange. So we'll see how that ties in. I'm, I'm curious. I think in WandaVision, she's going to mess around with the multiverse a lot to try to find a vision. Yeah. And there's been rumor that they're going to show a younger version of Quicksilver, too. Huh. So they're probably going to fuck around with that a lot, too. Yeah, I, I heard it's going to... I heard it Disney's really trying to do a sitcom, but still keep it in, like, the, in the universe. Yeah, kind of mess with your mind a little yeah, bit. Yeah, because like, so. I know that they're bringing the dude from Ant-Man... Uh, what's his name? He's Paul like, Rudd? Not Paul Rudd. The uh, Asian guy. What's his name? Oh, the cop? Yeah. Yeah. He's going to be like one of their neighbors or something. Oh, okay. Yeah. So he's probably going to be probably one of his characters, but he's probably going to play the same character, but, uh, you know, as a different person because she's going to be traveling throughout the multiverse. So, yeah. You know, you know, different things can change, and that's the fun thing about the multiverse. You can have whatever you want almost. Yeah, pretty much. I mean, that's what the comic books... DC and Marvel mostly are famous for their other worlds, you know what I mean? Yeah. So, I'm excited to see what is going to happen. This expands more into introducing more characters. Um, oh, here's another bit of news I didn't have on, but I read this week, which I found interesting, which I don't know what they mean by it, but on the line of Marvel, uh, I read on that D the, the Disney uh, official fan page for Twitter. Yeah. They came out and said that New Mutants is part of the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Oh, what? Yeah. So I don't know if that's they, the it first. Was, I don't know if it was a mistake, or if they meant like it's a new Marvel movie in a in a, like a cinematic. I don't know what it meant, but a lot of people were are were blown up by this, and people were like, "Oh, is this how they're going to introduce mutants into the Marvel universe? Is that why they reshot the movie to fit they, it in the Marvel they universe?" Might, that might, you know, that's a really good theory. You know, so a lot of people don't know. I, uh, I personally think Disney made a mistake saying that. Yeah. Because now people are like losing their shit. Like, okay, this is how they're gonna introduce them. But um, maybe it wasn't a mistake. Maybe it is true. I mean, maybe this is how they drop the news that this is gonna be how maybe they entered the multiverse, which will be interesting because if that is true, then that technically will be Marvel's first horror uh, movie. Yeah, it would be because yeah, it's gonna be a it's, it's supposed to be a horror movie. Yeah. But in the trailer, it still shows like the Marvel by Fox logo. It does. Instead of the Marvel Studios logo. Yeah. But we'll see. I mean, the fan club came out and said that. I haven't heard any news after that about it saying, you know, you know, no Kevin Feige hasn't came out and said, like, yeah, this that's that's not true. I haven't heard anything yet. So we, we shall see. All right. All right. Uh, the next bit of news, uh, what we do in the shadows, the Taika Waititi show. Yeah. That is on FX, which is originally, originally a movie. Based on the uh, documentary. Mockumentary, yeah, yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. that they filmed. It was a movie that he made. It was a comedy about vampires. Uh, it's hilarious. Much what they do on their what they do on their downtime yeah. when they're not killing people. Um, Mark Hamill is going to be guest starring in season two. <coughs> which also, <coughs> after he's done dying, yeah. Uh, it also got renewed for season two, which will be out in April. Yeah. And Mark Hamill is supposed to be guest starring in one of the episodes. That's gonna be cool. So I'm excited to see what character he's gonna play. Um, I have never seen the show. I've never seen the movie, but I've heard very good things about it. So I gotta watch the movie, then watch season one, and then maybe uh, season two when it comes yeah. out. You know, yeah. Yeah. So it's basically a documentary because they're going, they're preparing to go to. A yeah, and they're talking to a camera and everything. Yeah, it's, it's kind of like the it gives me the Office vibes. Yeah. Because uh, they're they're planning to go to a convention, I think, or something like that. Um, and, and Taika Waititi's in it too, isn't he? I believe so. He plays one of the vampires. Yeah. yeah. And so there's just the, all these these like this group of vampires that live together in the same flat. Yeah. Um, they live with the uh, Dracula and everything. Yeah, I remember, it's hilarious. I've ever seen one clip of uh, like them opening the door, like they're offering Dracula some food, and he gets mad at them, and he just closes the door. He's like, "All right, I'll talk to you later." Yeah, it's, there's another. What's another? It's another famous vampire that they live with, but it's hilarious. Nosferatu. Yeah, that's it. They live Nosferatu. In they live in Nosferatu. Yeah. Uh, and then like they go out clubbing and like they just live their day to day life. That's and hilarious. It's hilarious. I gotta check it out. We'll probably we'll probably watch yeah. it. Um, I have one more, unless you have. No, I got a couple more. Uh, okay. Oh, what, no, that was it for me, actually. <laughs> uh, my last one... My last one. Uh, ...is uh, those familiar with Young Frankenstein with Gene Wilder and Mel Brooks. Mel Brooks is coming out to pre produce a Young Frankenstein Live. pre deduce pre deduce uh, Young Frankenstein Live. It's going to be on ABC. Um, oh, okay, so they're going to do it like how they've been doing. Them. Like the sound of music. Like and the, all the plays and stuff. Yeah, yeah. on TV. So they're going to be doing a Young Frankenstein. It's going to be based... Upon the adaptation, not the 1974 movie, but um, the f Broadway adaption of it. Okay. That came out in like 2008, or 2007, I'm sorry. So I wonder if they uh, took a lot of inspiration from the movie, but added yeah, they, to yeah, it. Yeah, they did. They just added music to it and stuff. Yeah, yeah. Okay. But I mean, I know that, basically, I've seen Young Frankenstein once, 
It's hilarious. Yeah, Gene. I mean, Gene Wilder. Gene Wilder is great, dude. Wilder, such an amazing actor. Um, and um, so Mel Brooks is really funny in it too. Um, so it's gonna be really funny. To, it's really gonna be really cool to see how they adapt bring that. that to life. They've done some pretty good ones. Grease was good. They did Hairspray Live. Yeah. Grease Live. Uh, they just did one recently. I think it might have been Sound of Music, right? Oh, uh, they did the Sound of Music a, little, a while ago. Uh, they they've did done one, a few. Uh, they did one recently. Jesus Christ Superstar. Yeah. I know they've done a few of them, but this is... They film on the back lots, and they go from commercial break, they go from different places. And yeah. So that's going to be cool. I'm, I'll am i check it out. Yeah. i got to watch the movie, though, too. I've never seen that movie. It's really funny. Yeah. Um, but that is going to do it for news yeah. of the Minosaur podcast. Um, thank you for supporting 80-plus episodes. That's and, crazy. Yeah, we're, we're, on our, we're well on our... If we, keep up, to 100. if we keep up with it, in the next 20 weeks, we can get to 100 this year. Yeah, and I know one of the weeks we're going to have two at least. Yeah, or one week and then one week, yeah. All right, we'll see how it goes. I, I don't know how I'm going to do it yet, but I think I'm going to do one one a week and then one the next. Or I might release both the same week just because they think they're going to be taking part of the two-year anniversary. So Yeah. Um, yeah, that's going to be fun. Uh, so, guys, thank you so much for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed this uh, horror news, and um, we will see you guys next week. Peace.